part of it is helping me better understand what in the world's going on, you know, with how Chrome I'll, is uh, I'll restart this little bit from the top. Okay. Um, so the Chrome developer tools are designed now to allow you to run the developer tools from a computer that you're not really sitting in front of, or say from a, a cell phone where you can't have all those debugger tools available to you. Uh -huh. And so what they do to allow that is when you start Chrome with this flag, remote debugging port, right. it opens that port up for connections over the network or just from the same machine. Okay. And so that port, uh, when Chrome is running. And that's why when we're automating Chrome, we have to have it running in debug mode so we can connect to that. It's going through that port. Right. That's what you were just saying. Uh, yeah. So when Chrome is running, it serves up a little website um, on that port. Uh, the default that Google recommends is 9,222. And this gives you a list of pages in that Chrome instance. And you can click one of them. Uh, and then you get all of the debugging tools that you would ever want or need. Um, but this is over the network. I could have gone on a, like a laptop sitting beside my desktop here. Right, with that same address. Yeah, on the same yeah, network. Browsed yeah, yeah, to this yeah. same little web page, and yeah, then gotten yeah. the same set of developer tools. Right. Um, and so that's why uh, Google has developed this. Um, but then uh, browser automation software package developers like Selenium mm -hmm. saw this uh, as an opportunity to do better automation to Chrome. Yeah. Um, they yeah. said, we can write our own tools that can debug a page, but automatically instead of right, uh, right. You know, manually. And so uh, when I was researching, like how does Chrome work? How does Selenium work? How does all that work? Um, I found that it just uses this remote debugging uh, protocol that Google has formalized. Um, from so earlier when you mentioned the whole thing about had you uh, connected to, I think I can't remember if you said right. or something else, but that's why it's across browsers is because they've just adopted the same approach. Now, yes. the commands you would put in are going to be different for Firefox and for Google, but it's still how you're connecting to it. Yeah. Okay. Um, people got excited about this debugging protocol that Google pioneered. Mm -hmm. And now a lot of other projects like Mozilla Firefox are supporting that. Uh -huh. um, Microsoft developed a compatibility layer for Edge before Edge jumped over to Chrome, uh -huh. uh, or jumped over to Chromium as it did. Um, and so this uh, DevTools protocol defines how to talk to the browser to do development. Cool. Wow. Um, and you see, can I get the protocol as JSON? Um, it says if you've set this remote debugging port with Chrome, the complete protocol version it speaks can be found <laughs> uh, right there. And so this talks about everything you can do with the protocol uh, that the browser supports. Um, but in our case, we just want a very limited subset of yeah. things to do. Yeah. Um, going off this list of inspectable pages, that's great if what you want to do is manually debug the web page. But you know, we're all about automation here. Right. Um, so if you browse to this, uh, JSON page, just slash JSON on the end. 
um, Chrome serves up a web page that has information about all the different uh, debuggable pages. And you'll see here you've got the tab. Let's see, where is Let me close some of these pages just to cut down on the amount of yeah. Yeah. listings here. Uh, so this one is the new tab page right here. Right. Um, and then on this debugger URL, WebSocket debugger URL, that's how you do all of the fancy talking to the page. You connect using a WebSocket to this URL, and it lets you automate uh, this page. Um, but Chrome treats a lot of things as pages that you wouldn't normally consider to be pages. Uh -huh. um, and that's another uh, big mistake I made when developing Chrome.ahk. I didn't understand that at first. Uh -huh. And so when I developed all of the my code, I didn't make it really transparent. That was what was going on because I didn't know that was what was going on. Uh, so uh, our first listing here is that new tab page, but our second listing here, um, the title is yeah. the Google Doodle URL and the type is listed as an iframe. And if we were to debug that, we would get, uh, well, you know what? Let's actually go and debug that. We get uh, just the iframe here. Let's take a look at the whole page. Yeah. You see there's an iframe here. Right. And since we've gone to the, the debug URL for just yeah. that iframe, right. all we see in the debugger is the contents of that iframe. So this here is the content from here. Right. Not, not that I care, but what, where wouldn't, I, was, I thought it was gonna also show a replicant of just that in the, the GUI there. Um, uh, yeah, that, so that's a newer feature that okay. Chrome has introduced. Um, I first saw it just a couple days ago when I okay. opened up. Yeah. I'm like, wait, that's new. Yeah. Um, so I, I also expected it to show here and it didn't. And that kind of, that kind of surprised me there. Yeah. Uh, but maybe iframes are different or they just haven't completed that yet. Right. Yeah, yeah, no worries. Yeah, the uh, fact, I mean, that's, yeah. When, when you're dealing with an, a, a frame in web scraping with IE, it can, it can for me, it can, you know, it, I, I've gotten better, but it, it, it can be a beating. Um, this, I could see how, man, if you can identify that frame directly, and that's what I usually tell people. It's like, see if you can actually go to that URL, <laughs> right? If you can, just connect to that one and you're done. And it's just so much easier. Yeah. I've done that so many times. Um, so many times it's it's just easier browse to the frame right, and right. anyway uh so we have that frame there's another frame on this page used for something i don't know uh, but then we also get down here to these are marked as pages again uh, and you see this id that's just a big hexadecimal string um, and i believe that is uh, one of these extensions where they haven't filled in the extension name string in their package correctly. Yeah. Uh, and inspecting that should give us the background page. Uh, oh, that's interesting. Huh. Maybe that's this page, yeah. That'd be ironic. Yeah, that, uh, yeah. No, that's just that page. Right. Uh, but the next one down here, title augury, that is an extension. 
I know that for a fact. Uh, I have Augury installed here. Yeah. And this little pop-up, that counts as a page. Yeah, I get it, yeah. And that's something that can be debugged. Um, I saw someone ask on the forum recently, you know, they saw that I said Chrome.ahk could be used to like automate LastPass or something. Um, but they couldn't find any documentation <laughs> about how to actually do that. Right. Uh, that's because there is no documentation about how to do that. I haven't, I haven't really done, I haven't tried it before, but the stuff to do that is. Yeah. You've shown how to connect to it, right? And then from there, it's just working with it. Uh, as far as I'm aware, but you know, maybe I'm wrong. Yeah. I've never, never really tried. Um, so when you, when you create an instance of Chrome, it launches it. Uh, it launches the Chrome browser. It tries to get a, a specific debug port, mm -hmm. um, and then it just saves that number mm -hmm. for that instance, right? That's yeah. Uh, yeah, it saves it to the instance, mm -hmm. um, but really just as easily I could have returned the number and you would use that as your, your identifier because that's the only thing that really matters. Um, and then when you create a page instance, say get page, um, I, I know I have a lot of very terse code here, uh, but what it, really does is it takes that WebSocket debugger URL that I was talking about and it passes it to this class page. If I do have a class in future versions of Chrome.ahk, this would be the only one. Oh, yeah. um, because this is the only one that really has any kind of state to hold on to. Uh -huh. Um, because when you connect to a page, now you have a live connection back and forth between the browser. Everything up to this point hasn't been a live connection of any real sort. Um, so it gets that WebSocket URL. Can, can I ask you real quick there? The I didn't want to interrupt you earlier when you said it. Can you briefly explain what a, what a WebSocket is, actually is? I mean, I, all I know is like it's a, a port that you can use to connect to something, but how is it different than, you know, like HTTP protocol or whatever? Um, right. So let's start with a socket. You open a connection to another machine and you can send data to it and it can send data back to you right. and you can just keep it open and go back and forth and back and forth. Yeah. Um, and then you have a web request where you open a connection to the machine, you send a request for some resource, yeah. and then it sends that resource back and you're done. Okay. Yeah. Um, WebSockets bridge the two. You start by sending a web request that says you want to open a WebSocket connection. Um, so rather than a, a get request or a post request, this is a new special kind of request. Okay. Um, and it uh, upgrades the connection to a WebSocket connection. And then from there, it's much more similar to a regular socket. You can send whatever data you want. It can send data back in real time, whatever data you want. Oh, okay. Thank you. Um, and the reason this has been difficult to do from AutoHockey is that WebSockets were designed with a lot of abstraction to make things easier for the JavaScript developer. Yeah. Uh, whereas with the socket, you send some bytes and they probably get there and uh, maybe not all of them get there at the same time. You have to wait to get the rest, fill up a mm -hmm. buffer, flush the buffer every now and then. 
WebSockets handle all that for you. You send what's called a, a message, uh -huh. and that gets encapsulated, and then the browser only exposes to you full messages. Oh, okay. Um, so you don't have to worry about okay. anything yeah. like right. text encoding or right. it all gets handled automatically. Yeah. And that takes a lot of extra code. Uh, even if you ignore things like uh, the secure sockets layer, SSL, yeah. um, writing all of that encryption code through auto hotkey would be borderline insanity, yeah. um, if not completely insane. And so it's just never happened, uh, which is why when I wrote chrome.ahk, uh, also discord.ahk, they both just create uh, an instance of Internet Explorer in the background, and they use uh, ActiveX or COM or whatever you want to call it yep. to handle all of the WebSocket code. And that's, correct me if I'm wrong, that's, no, wait, is that part of the slowdown or part of the limitation? Um, that's part of the instability. Okay, thank you. Uh, it's actually really fast to do like that. Um, so I wouldn't be too concerned about slowness yeah, in that yeah. case. Um, but Internet Explorer isn't really known for its stability and neither is uh, uh honestly active x um so while it works great almost all of the time there's still that one chance every i don't know maybe weeks months where it, it just breaks down for no apparent reason okay um and maybe it's the the background GUI that I'm hosting Internet Explorer and died. Yeah. Um, once IE finally goes away and dies, is that going to prevent us from doing what you're doing, or are we still going to have that COM object or, or ActiveX? I'm skeptical that Internet Explorer is ever going yeah. away. Yeah. Uh, but uh, it came to my attention recently that there is a C API for doing WebSockets mm. uh, as part of the Windows API. Uh -huh. And that could be your connection? Your, your, your... Yeah, so here we have WebSocket create client handle. I don't know what that means yet, yeah. but I intend to find out. Um, I see the word WebSocket and I see a lot of the same documentation styles that I see when I'm looking at a DLL compatible, yeah. uh, DLL call compatible API. So I'm hopeful that all of this will help me to ditch Internet Explorer in future projects. Yeah. But I don't know. I, I haven't tried it yet. We'll see how it goes. Um, Although doing it that way will make it even more strange to implement tea drinkers suggestion. Uh -huh. Like we have finally gotten rid of the thing that we needed internet Explorer for. Now let's change the thing we don't need internet Explorer for to use it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but we'll see. Yeah. Cool. Um, okay. So that's, maybe more than you ever wanted to know about how this works. No, honestly, it, you know, I, I mean, I, I've never had any programming. I shouldn't say any, I, I had like a semester, you know, um, it's worth of programming. So I, I learned from, you know, reading the forum and this and that. So taking deep dives like this really helped me jump, you know, connect the dots on a lot of stuff that you don't find in a post, right? Or if it is, if it's that long, I don't read those, you know, I just, I, I just lose interest. So yeah. walking it through with a live example really helps. Yeah. Uh, let's see. So it, I, I think it's coming back to me now how this whole yeah, how, Chrome well, thing works. So uh, uh, let, let me, I'm going to stop.